Uh, well, it's very clear from my conversations with those uh, on working on Donald Trump's transition team, those familiar with uh, why he came to the decision of selecting Cash Patel. Uh, they said it was clear that Donald Trump wanted a bulldog in the FBI and someone who would reform it, disrupt it, and root out uh, what he sees as bias among many of the agents, particularly, um, you know, involving some of the distrust that Donald Trump has regarding the FBI and the Department of Justice overall. Remember, he really uh, became very distrustful of the FBI back in 2016 when they began investigating his then campaign for his alleged ties to Russia. He only grew mo more distrustful of the agency uh, when they ended up raiding his Mar-a-Lago home in August of 2022 and then later, of course, uh, indicting him in the case regarding whether he mishandled classified documents. And so the selection of Cash Patel is really trying to choose someone who he believes is like-minded with the way that he views the intelligence community and what he wants to do with the FBI. And that does include uh, potentially wanting to go after some of Donald Trump's political opponents and those that they view as um, having misused the FBI and Justice Department over the past several years. Now, I will say, uh, you mentioned some of the controversy. We just heard some of that that you played. Uh, there's a lot of people who have skepticism about whether or not Patel is the right person for this role. And many in Donald Trump's orbit also recognize that he's likely to have uh, a contentious Senate confirmation battle. However, we've also seen a number of people today really try and come to Patel's defense. And they pointed out the same thing that I was just laying out, which is that they believe that they need someone to reform the FBI and that Cash, is the, Cash Patel is the person and to do that. We saw people tweet like Stephen Miller, Donald Trump's incoming deputy chief of staff for policy. Um, Senator Mike Lee, someone that he, Donald Trump had considered for a potential cabinet role. Uh, Mike Walsh has uh, expected his pick to be his new national security advisor. So a lot of people with close ties to Trump really coming out and trying to defend him. But then we also heard senators as well, Republican senators, go on television today to defend him. I want you to take a listen to what Senator Bill Haggerty said. I've encouraged President Trump to bring Cash Patel to the table for precisely this reason. This entire agency needs to be cleaned out. It's not doing its job. There are serious problems at the FBI. The American public knows it. They expect to see sweeping change, and Cash Patel is just the type of person to do it. Now, Fred, uh, Patel, like many of the other controversial picks that Donald Trump has announced uh, since winning the November 5th election, is likely to uh, go to the Hill and meet with senators, I'm told, uh, before his confirmation battle. Unclear when that will happen, uh, but a move that Donald Trump has really been trying to make with some of these picks to make sure they can kind of smooth the pathway before seeing those confirmation battles play out in public. Mm -hmm. and, and Elena, uh, Trump has also announced a couple of other noteworthy picks uh, with family ties for his new administration. That's right. Uh, the latest coming today when he announced that uh, his daughter, Tiffany Trump, Tiffany Trump's father-in-law, uh, Mossad um, Bulos, will be his new envoy uh, to the Middle East and Arab affairs. A really big role, particularly as we note what's happening in the Middle East right now with the war between um, Israel and, and Gaza and, and fighting Hamas. And so... Um, you know, this move comes just 24 hours or so after Donald Trump had already announced that Charles Kushner, uh, Ivanka Trump's his other daughter, uh, his other daughter's father-in-law, would be uh, his pick to be the ambassador to France. So really just showing that Donald Trump is kind of keeping with his trend over um, the past several years now of really leaning on family members for these roles. And I'll note as well that some of this is drawing some questions of whether, um, you know, there are conflicts of interest. It was the same thing we saw when he announced that Jared Kushner and Ivanka Trump were going to be senior White House advisors in his first term. Fred? Mm. All right. Elena Treen, thanks so much. All right. Joining me right now to talk more about uh, these developments, Ron Brownstein. He is a CNN senior political analyst and a senior editor for The Atlantic. Ron, great to see you. Hey, Fred. All right. So just in the last 24 hours, Trump has made four more selections to his administration. Uh, They're all very loyal to Trump. Um, and two, as Elena was just uh, underscoring there, two of them are president-elect's in-laws. So um, yeah. through these picks and others, what tenor or tone is Trump setting? Yeah, look, I think I think it's two sides of the same coin. I mean, the Patel selection uh, continues a pattern of Trump selecting loyalists who most push the boundaries of what previously would have been considered acceptable nominees in the positions uh, that would uh, position them uh, to most effectively advance what he talked about openly in the campaign uh, was an agenda of retribution 
and revenge, whether it's uh, Pete Hegseth at the Defense Department, obviously Matt Gates originally, now Pam Bondi as Attorney General, Tulsi Gabbard uh, at DNI, uh, all people who are unlikely to raise many red flags and, in fact, are more likely to participate if Trump tries to follow through on his pledge or threat, depending on how you look at it, uh, to use the federal government against people uh, he views as his opponents. The other side of the coin are the appointments of these uh, family members uh, mm -hmm. to key positions, extending what he did in his first term. They both, I think, reflect the same underlying dynamic. Donald Trump sees the entirety of the federal government as a vehicle to advance his own interests, as an extension of his own personal will. And the extent to which uh, this departs from the, the dominant view going back to the 1883 Civil Service Act, that there should be limits on the arbitrary exercise of executive power, presidential power, I think we're only getting the first, you know, the first glimmers of how seriously he is going to challenge all of those norms uh, and traditions and limits. Yeah, uh, I mean, this isn't the first time Trump, you know, has long turned to his family members to serve in political roles. His daughter Ivanka and her husband, Jared Kushner, served as senior advisors in his first term. So I wonder, um, and just as there were, you know, questions of conflicts of interest, nepotism, all that was being challenged with them. How do you see that being, I guess, elevated, those concerns this go round with these in-laws who have been brought into the fold? Yeah, I mean, look, I think I think there are obviously conflict of interest, you know, uh, issues for either of them. I think the larger issue is what this tells us about Donald Trump's mindset as he enters uh, the government. You know, Jared Kushner's father was a convicted felon that Trump pardoned. He's now naming him as ambassador uh, to France. Uh, Kash Patel was someone that Bill Barr essentially, you know, laid down in front of the tracks as attorney general to avoid uh, his appointment to the FBI in Trump's first term. And now, uh, you know, Trump is basically daring the Republican Senate uh, to say no. I think all of these reflect the same, you know, really twin beliefs. One, as I said, is that he views the entirety of the federal government as a means to advance his personal interests. And he also believes that there will, you know, that there is not going to be the resistance he faced, you know, intermittent as it was in his first term uh, among elements of the Republican uh, coalition. And so we will see, you know, what boundaries, if any, the Senate is willing to put. Uh, you know, Matt Gates was too far. Will Tulsi Gabbard be too far? Would R.F. Mm -hmm. Kennedy Jr. be too far? Would Patel be too far? I'm dubious that enough Republicans are going to say no uh, to Patel, but perhaps on Gabbard or some of the others, there may be, you know, some restraint. But the overall, the overall message Trump is sending uh, is that he feels very unbound as he uh, heads mm -hmm. into a second term. I you know, even more specifically, and you, you mentioned the former, you know, Attorney General Bill Barr. This is, you know, he tried to block the move of of uh, Patel. He, in fact, wrote in his memoir uh, about that moment, saying, "I yeah. categorically opposed making Patel deputy FBI director. I told Mark Meadows it would happen." I'm quoting again, over my dead body, he says. Uh, the very idea of moving Patel into a role like this showed a shocking detachment from reality. So that kind of material, you know, or precedent in thinking and action, how do you see that being folded into uh, the confirmation hearings if it gets that far with Cash Patel? Yeah, well, first of all, it's hard to imagine Pam Bondi making that speech, right? And and the fact that it's not going to be Bill Barr in the cabinet in a second Trump term basically underlines the point I made before. I mean, when, when he was first elected, he felt he had to make concessions to other power centers in the Republican Party. You could see that in his appointments uh, and in the agenda that he pursued or didn't pursue. Uh, all of that, I think, is gone. I mean, he believes uh, with, you know, with considerable justification that he has broken the Republican Party to his will. And in effect, he is daring Republican senators to say no to him on multiple Front. You know, as we talked about before, I doubt that any of them before a few weeks ago possibly ever imagined they would be asked to, to name uh, to vote on Robert F. Kennedy Jr. as secretary of HHS, particularly now you have the, Trump's own former FDA official uh, a commissioner saying that RFK Jr. is, is a risk uh, to, to Americans' health. Here again, I mean, the, the issue on all of these nominees is not so much how do they um, comport with or fit 
within the traditional parameters of what we thought acceptable for the for that job. The only issue is, are there four Republican senators who are willing to say no? Um, and, you know, there are only so many times uh, any Republican senator, yeah. I think, is going to be willing to say no. So th there's kind of a priority list here. Yeah. Uh, I kind of suspect that the nominees are going to be attacked from the right, maybe easier for Republicans to unify against someone like Gabbard. Um, but Patel, by historic standards, by the, by the standards Bill Barr laid out, would be unacceptable to traditional Republicans. Mm. I'm not so sure he's going to be unacceptable to this Republican Party at this moment. Yeah, well, possibly there'll be a lot of deal making among uh, Republicans uh, during the confirmation hearing to see, um, you know, what kind of objections can be made yeah. without major repercussions. All right, Ron Brownstein, thanks so much.